Okay, maybe it's uh, time to start. We are already three minutes late if we are using the, uh, the uh, criteria of, uh, of, of the college. All the courses start on time. So we are okay. So first, let me uh, welcome you to this uh, seminar. I think it is really uh, a, a very uh, interesting and uh, not a, a very common event. You will uh, find very rarely uh, a program of, uh, of a seminar uh, which uh, would uh, gather so many uh, top experts in uh, the area. Uh, and I have the feeling that uh, it will uh, take some time before we'll get the same kind of group together. I think that at some stage uh, before uh, tomorrow night, we have to, make a, uh, to take a picture of uh, all these people to make sure that this will be an event that will remain in history. So let me first thank the speakers for uh, having accepted to, 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 to come. Uh, at the same time, I believe that uh, uh, it is not uh, uh, too big a sacrifice to be in Paris uh, these days. Uh, you have seen that Paris is completely gorgeous. The uh, terrace in the cafe and the restaurants are waiting for, uh, for you. Uh, when the seminar will be over, of course. Uh, and uh, you may have, uh, you, you should have been uh, especially pleased to know that we did all what we could to make sure that you would share with us a typical French event, which is a transportation strike. <laughs> and uh, I had some problem because it's, they, they, they made a mistake. They started last week. So I had to call them more or less every day to tell them, keep on, keep on, they are not yet. <laughs> but finally, we succeeded. So, uh, and if, in case, you are stuck tomorrow, no, on Saturday, uh, then uh, it will not be too much of a problem, because on Saturday, we have another uh, typical French event, which is the Fête de la Musique. Uh, so you see, I mean, this is not, there cannot be a better time to be in Paris. OK, uh, let me uh, make a few remarks to, 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 to start with. So uh, basically, this seminar is about trying to think about uh, development economics, uh, development and development economics, of course, and uh, where this uh, uh, discipline is uh, headed uh, uh, to. Uh, there have been a lot of changes, and I will uh, uh, make a few uh, comments or a, a short presentation on, uh, on those changes. And uh, it is important to uh, try to figure out uh, whether we are uh, going in the right direction, whether we are not missing uh, some uh, important issues. And this will be the topic for those two days. And the organization of the seminar will be into, with two types of uh, exercise. One will be uh, standard presentations of work by the, uh, our, uh, our guests on their current work and trying to see or uh, for them to show that uh, the, the, the direction in which their own research and the research around them is going. And then there will be two round tables, uh, because it was difficult to have uh, 10 uh, plus uh, speakers around uh, the table. Uh, we made two round tables, which is essentially about the main topic of this uh, uh, seminar, which is about the future of development economics. And uh, the idea is really to look at uh, different types of issues. And one way of uh, dividing work would be to have uh, the first round table focusing more on uh, uh, inward or uh, uh, domestic uh, views about uh, uh, national development, and the second round table more about international issues, global issues, including, of course, uh, aid and uh, this kind of uh, uh, policy, uh, policy agenda. Uh, but of course, uh, in economics, everything is in everything, which means that uh, uh, everybody will be uh, welcome to, to intervene in a either of the round tables if uh, they find that there is something which has to be emphasized. OK, so the uh, rule for the uh, presentation will be uh, a standard one. There will be uh, exactly 30 minutes for uh, presentation. And then we'll have uh, 15 minutes for, uh, for, 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 for discussion. But let me try to introduce the whole uh, seminar with a few uh, pictures, which I'm taking from the uh, presentation I made from the inaugural uh, lecture that I gave for this, uh, this course. 
Uh, and uh, this uh, first picture is about uh, the nice thing about development. And this is simply the evolution of uh, GDP per capita expressed in uh, purchasing power parity terms of uh, 2005 uh, since uh, over the last uh, uh, half century, 1960 until 2012. And you see that all these curves are uh, 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 increasing. Some of them started uh, a decrease at some stage, in particular Sub-Saharan Africa, but over the last uh, 10 to 15 years, it is uh, uh, increasing again. So from that point of view, we could say, fine, development is going on. And uh, in all these countries, resources uh, that can be consumed or invested are increasing. The same kind of uh, satisfactory uh, 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 feeling is coming from considering the evolution of poverty in the world. These are uh, World Bank uh, uh, statistics uh, based on uh, household surveys in uh, many countries uh, in the world. And you see on that picture the evolution of the proportion of people in all these regions who are below $1.25 a day per person and per day. And uh, again, you can see that uh, though these curves are uh, declining, the red curve is for the whole world. And uh, we started at a little more than 50% poor people in the world uh, in 1980, and we are now uh, close to 20%. So this is really a big achievement. At the same time, we see that uh, this achievement is uh, uh, unequally distributed in the sense that in some countries, the uh, drop has been absolutely spectacular, like in East Asia. And uh, in other uh, parts of the world, in particular in Africa, we see that uh, the uh, change, the progress, has been much, much slower. Uh, we are today at uh, a level of uh, uh, poverty, a proportion of poor people, with, which is not very, very far from where we were in 1980, after an increase which took place in the 90s. So, and I don't know why, but uh, the uh, Latin American curve has disappeared. Latin America is still there. There is still some poverty in Latin America, but uh, OK, sorry about this. But uh, the curve is rather, rather flat and at a very low level. Now, if we change slightly our view, and if we look at GDP not anymore in absolute terms, but in relation with GDP in the US, and we would have exactly the same kind of uh, uh, curves if we were to look at uh, GDP with respect to, in comparison with uh, European countries, Western European countries, then we see that the picture is not exactly as rosy. Uh, we see that for the world, in comparison with rich countries, the world average is uh, more or less the same today as it was uh, 50 years ago. When we look at Latin America, we see more or less the same uh, kind of result. As a matter of fact, Latin America, in comparison with rich countries, is uh, less uh, uh, advanced than it was in the uh, early uh, 60s. And uh, uh, we find, of course, that East Asia, over the, uh, especially since uh, 80, 80, 85, 90, is increasing very rapidly. We see that South Asia is also uh, making up uh, for part of the gap over the last uh, 10 years. And we see that after a very, very long um, descent, Africa finally is starting to increase again. But the drop uh, in relative terms in Africa is really quite substantial. Uh, it went from 8% in 1960 to uh, a little more than 4% in, uh, 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 today. So from that point of view, the picture is certainly not very satisfactory. Uh, in relative terms, development achievements are not that great. And uh, another uh, point is, of course, the diversity of national experiences. And here we, I simply, uh, put together this uh, chart simply to show the huge difference between uh, the well-known success of South Korea, the uh, red curve, in comparison with other developing countries. Brazil uh, is a, a, an interactive curve in the sense that there is first an increase until the 80s, and then long stagnation, and then some growth picking up again. Uh, countries like Côte d'Ivoire, where uh, basically since uh, 1980 there has been a, a kind of continuous drop in uh, GDP per capita. And uh, of course, China and India, where over the recent past uh, we have a very spectacular uh, growth. So this is the uh, picture that we get from 
very standard uh, uh, series that uh, we can find in uh, any uh, database. And uh, this is simply suggesting that things are not all rosy and uh, in relative terms, certainly not very much has uh, happened. Uh, OK, now I want to insist on uh, the following point. We can see in this uh, big uh, uh, picture, we can distinguish three stages in uh, uh, development. The three stages are there. We have first a uh, very favorable period, which is the uh, 60s and the 70s, which ends up with after the uh, uh, commodity boom in the 70s and then in uh, the uh, late 70s, early 80s, and which uh, end with the uh, debt crisis in 1982. Then we have a period of uh, stagnation in Latin America, in Africa, and then we have the taking off of uh, East Asia uh, in the uh, 90s. And this is especially in Latin America and in Africa, the period of the structural adjustment. And uh, finally, we have uh, the uh, growth revival in the world, which uh, uh, starts at uh, the end of the, of the 90s, and which uh, probably for Africa and Latin America is very much associated with a boom in commodities uh, again. What is interesting is that those three stages, which are very, very clear on these uh, pictures, are all associated with different views about uh, uh, development, different approaches to uh, development. And those three approaches would be the following. The first stage is accumulation planning. These are the days of planning. And uh, uh, in those days, economists or development economists work on what is the best strategy in terms of uh, the allocation of investment across different sectors, across different types of infrastructure to uh, accelerate the process of growth. Uh, and uh, modeling in those days is uh, something extremely important. Then we have the structural adjustment period, which is almost the opposite. The idea there is to, uh, instead of uh, emphasizing the uh, intervention of the state, it is, on the contrary, to give uh, more autonomy and more power to market mechanisms and to reestablish incentives. And finally, we have uh, in the uh, recent uh, uh, period, that we have that the dominant approach to development are on the one hand microeconomics and on the other hand at the macro level the emphasis being put on institutions. So there is a behind this uh, very uh, simple word there is a very interesting evolution of the of the thought uh, in uh, terms of uh, development economics and uh, uh, part of this uh, seminar is about uh, trying to uh, see or to guess what will be next, or more importantly, to make suggestions about where should we go from where uh, we are. And uh, I already took uh, maybe uh, too much time, I'm the limit of my uh, time, so let me uh, quickly conclude on this. Now, we under the two or three remarks about this. First, it is not clear that uh, there is truly knowledge accumulation in uh, all this process. It is not clear that what we learned or what we worked uh, on at the first stage, at the time of uh, accumulation planning, uh, is extremely useful today or is being used today. I remember in those days, and uh, some people in the room would also uh, remember that, something very important was cost-benefit analysis. This is something which has disappeared. And one may wonder why it is okay that they disappear. Does that mean that uh, we are not able to compute costs and benefits and to take them into account when deciding about an infrastructure in uh, uh, some uh, region in a country or in some sector in uh, the uh, economy? Probably not. And it, is in it would be interesting to uh, analyze why it is the case. Or is it the case that this disappeared because we thought that uh, in any case uh, cost-benefit analysis had led to uh, wrong decisions and therefore the methodology had to be thrown out uh, at the same time as uh, its uh, uh, consequences. And we can make this kind of uh, uh, remark for many things which uh, happened in, uh, in, 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 in the process, in that uh, evolution. And I think it would be interesting to try to uh, work more systematically on the reason why some instrument appeared at some point of time and disappeared at another point of time. 
But uh, this is not uh, the time and the place uh, to do that. If we look at the recent evolution and the emphasis on microeconomics and institutions, it is important in the sense that it's very nice that uh, uh, the emphasis, the focus, has been put on the microeconomic aspects of development. This has been permitted by the fantastic development of data in uh, uh, developing countries. Uh, this, we are doing things today which were completely impossible 20 or 30 years ago, and it is absolutely essential, of course, to analyze uh, the, uh, and to draw the lessons from this information which is becoming uh, increasingly available. Uh, at the same time, uh, we have to realize that it is not with uh, micro-interventions that it will be possible to create uh, all the jobs that uh, will be needed in uh, Africa in the next uh, 50 years in order to uh, uh, provide employment to uh, two, million, uh, 2 billion people. Uh, so uh, uh, this is fine, and uh, we certainly should continue. But uh, I believe that the fact that the macro uh, aspect has lost, to some extent, weight with respect to uh, uh, micro is uh, somewhat uh, uh, of a concern, and uh, uh, I think it would be a good thing if this uh, group could uh, uh, reflect on, on this. And uh, we could say very much the same thing about uh, institutions. I mean, it is a fantastic progress to have gotten into the political economy of uh, development, and we know direct by direct observations how important it is. But um, at the same time, uh, we also know that it is very difficult to modify institutions uh, exogenously. Uh, so uh, what are exactly the policy implications of all this analysis is, uh, for the moment, it seems to me somewhat uh, problematic. Maybe uh, uh, there are uh, lessons that we can draw, but uh, they, are may, they may not be uh, that, uh, that, that, that obvious. So uh, to some extent, everything is happening what is happening then one has the feeling that the profession, after a lot of attempts at, at understanding the mechanism behind economic growth and uh, development, found that uh, there was no very satisfactory uh, uh, answer, or maybe found that uh, uh, everything was extremely context and country specific, and then decided uh, not to invest uh, much more uh, time and effort in uh, this uh, area. But if this is the case, uh, it seems to me that uh, this is uh, uh, one of the issues that, uh, that, that we have to, to look at. In the same way, we have to look at uh, what is exactly the implication and the kind of work done in microeconomics, how this can be used as uh, 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 well as possible in order to uh, promote, to generate uh, uh, development at uh, the macro level. So it seems that uh, there is uh, much to, to be done in this, in this area. So this is the kind of uh, general question that I would like uh, this uh, group to uh, uh, focus on. Uh, and uh, I'm sure that uh, by uh, tomorrow uh, afternoon, uh, we'll know uh, much more about all this. And uh, maybe we will have a, a, a research agenda uh, in front of us. So I will stop uh, here. Um, again, thanks to everybody to be, to be here. And we'll get into the crux of the matter. And, uh, the first set of papers have a more macro orientation, but uh, maybe not, or maybe I misinterpreted what uh, the uh, authors uh, uh, told me. And uh, the first speaker will therefore be uh, Danny Roderick uh, uh, on structural change, industrialization, and economic growth. Um, Danny is uh, uh, recently moved from uh, the Harvard uh, Kennedy School at Harvard to uh, the uh, Princeton uh, Institute for Advanced Studies. Uh, and uh, uh, I'm sure that uh, all the people in the room know about uh, Danny and uh, his work. And uh, we are very happy that he is with us today. And uh, without further ado, I call to them for Danny. Thank you.